What is up everybody? So today we're taking a look at an interesting comment I saw the other day where someone was claiming that the GH5S is better in low light than the full frame S series Panasonic cameras, which, you know, we've all heard over and over that full frame is just better than APS-C, better than, you know, the bigger the format, the better the low light performance is gonna be, right? So yeah, I thought there's no way the GH5S, which is an older camera, a micro four thirds camera can possibly beat any modern full frame camera, especially like a really brand new one like the S5 here in a low light comparison. So I called up my buddy and said, let's test this thing out. So I did two tests, but one was out of focus on the GH5S. So we really only have this video of my friend here posing for me. And yeah, it gives us a good idea of things because on our subject that's properly exposed, the cameras are gonna look pretty good, but the noise in the darker background or in this red pipe here is gonna tell us a lot. So along with that sensor size difference, the GH5S is also working with a slightly different picture profile. We've got V-Log L or light versus full V-Log in the S5, but you know, it's the closest we can do. And V-Log really does highlight and bring out the noise and images. So I think it was the best profile either way. Let's check it out. So the GH5S coming in at its low base native ISO is 400. And it's pretty much the best you can do on this camera. It's sharp, the colors are good, the noise performance is good. I mean, it just looks good. What else to say? So the S5 actually starts at 640 low base ISO and V-Log anyway. And yeah, it's the same story. The noise might be better just because it's down sampling a bigger image. Um, but it looks good to me. I don't, I think the noise is a little finer and looks therefore a little better, but it's really close. I don't want to make any bold claims here because at the low base native ISO, it's really close. So let's jump up to the GH5S, the second native ISO there. So yeah, uh, both native ISOs on the GH5S are basically identical, if not completely the same. I think you can use them more or less interchangeably, which isn't something I can say about the S5. It looks like uh, the S5 at 4000, which is its second native base ISO, is actually slightly worse than it was at 640. So upon closer inspection, I think the noise performance of the GH5S might be a little bit better, but the S5, I think, maintains a little more detail and color accuracy, so it's kind of a tie, actually, at the high base ISO. The S5 is better at the low end, in my opinion, and higher, it's a little bit, no, it's it's better at the low end and even at the high base ISO and low base ISO. The takeaway here is that it's pretty hard to tell the difference either way, actually, which is kind of the whole point of the video. But don't tell anybody, let's keep this between you and me. And let's look at the ridiculous levels of ISO. So we're gonna max out the GH5 ISO here and it ain't great. It's really soft, really noisy, and probably not usable at all unless you put it through some kind of noise reduction filter. Um, but remember, if you're gonna use a noise reduction filter, be sure to turn down noise reduction in the camera all the way, because if you do it in camera, it's gonna create artifacts, and those platforms can take away noise, but generally can't take away noise reduction artifacts, so. That's a tip I think I got from Philip Bloom. So back to the GH5S. Yeah, it's really soft, really noisy, probably not usable except in the most extreme situations. And the S5, if you look at the same ISO, I would agree pretty much everything that's true on the GH5S is true here. It's just not as true or it's, you know what I mean. At these extreme, extreme ISOs, the S5 full frame camera is a lot better than the GH5S. Is that because of the 
full frame sensor gathering more light? Is it just the newer camera? Your guess is as good as mine. But in practicality, the S5 is better at these super high ISOs if you're gonna be relying on that from time to time. I mean, I think they both look a little bad actually just because of that green color shift. If you get rid of that in editing software and you kind of color grade it a little bit, like here for example, it looks a lot better with the colors being accurate. That's the thing. It's not just noise at these super high ISOs. You also lose sharpness and detail as well as color accuracy. So it's not just as simple as noise. There's other factors in raising your ISO that high up as well. And those factors apply to both images. I just think the S5 is a little bit better. So in summary, low base ISO, S5 wins, high base ISO. I think both cameras are pretty much even. But again, the GH5S will be more consistent because I think their ISOs look more consistent. And then like we just talked about, when you get to those extreme ISOs, the full frame camera does seem to perform better and you can actually extend that ISO even higher um, past the, where the GH5 allows you to, but the results are just gonna get worse and worse. So the real two takeaways for me are that I mean, one, it's just so hard to tell them apart at a casual glance or even at a serious, you know, intentional look. It was hard for me to really track down what the differences were and quantify them in a way that actually I could have confidence in. Because at first it was really like, man, it's hard to tell. And I think that also goes to show that Conventional wisdom isn't always right. You know, the way people describe crop factor isn't necessarily true. The way ISO works in general isn't as predictable as you would think. And cameras of different years, of different ISOs, of different sensor sizes can still get really similar, if not identical results. And that gives me a lot of hope for micro four thirds and going forward. Uh, the GH5S, being able to beat out a camera that's two or three years newer um, with a full frame sensor nonetheless is really impressive and goes to show that with the right engineering and right planning, GH5S or the hopefully GH6 coming soon will be able to pretty easily keep up with full frame cameras, at least in the noise and low light department, especially because it's a lot easier to get bright aperture zooms for micro four thirds. I mean, I'm shooting right now on the Leica 10 to 25 f 1.7, which is significantly faster than your standard full frame f 2.8 zoom. Now you won't get the same amount of background blur relatively, but when it comes to pure light gathering, that 1.7 is a 1.7. And if your sensor is just as good as a full frame sensor, but your glass is way faster, then you have a real chance at matching or even beating certain full frame cameras in theory. So yeah, does the GH5S beat the S5? No, but it was a really close fight to the point where, you know what, let's, I think it's a draw. I think I'm gonna say it's so close that it's hard to even compare them. So that's as close to a draw as I can, maybe 51% to the S5 and the S series cameras and 49% to the GH5S. But just think about how that GH6 might handle low light. Ooh, it, it better have a dual gain sensor or it's dead on arrival for me uh, unless they do something really, really interesting. But GH6 is a topic for a different day. If you like this video and you like this comparison, uh, definitely let me know in the comments, like the video. Subscribe if you really like it and you want to see more comparisons like this, especially with Lumix cameras, both micro four thirds and full frame. And if you did subscribe, I will see you guys in the next video.